Hello, my name is Andy Owen. I'm Subject Officer for GCSE Geography here at WJAC EDUCAS. And this video is about the use of transects in fieldwork. A transect is a form of sampling strategy in which geographical features are sampled along a line. The survey line of a transect usually cuts across a geographical feature. As such, transects are usually positioned at right angles to the feature, so they cut through different zones. Classic example, of course, being a transect through a sand dune ecosystem as illustrated on this slide, starting on the left and the embryo dunes, working through the yellow dunes and then into the fixed dunes. But of course you could use transect in a variety of different circumstances, both in physical and human geography. In preparing for your fieldwork, you may use the school grounds, although of course you cannot use the school grounds for the actual piece of fieldwork itself. So in preparation, you could use the school grounds for learning how to set out a transect, how the length of the transect, how often you're going to sample along it, and the pieces of equipment that you might use um, at various points along that transect, for example, an anemometer or a quadrat. The other piece of preparation you might want to do before starting your fieldwork is to introduce the students to the location that they're going to be visiting through the use of an online website, perhaps showing digital maps or satellite images, something like Google Street View or a satellite image of a sand dune ecosystem so that the candidates can learn where the transect might be set up, where is it going to be at right angles to the features, etc. Data can be collected at points along a transect, and students should be involved in the decision-making process about things like the frequency of the sampling points and the sampling strategy that will be used along the transects, whether, for example, the points will be selected at random or at stratified intervals or regular systematic intervals. It will obviously vary depending on the context. So for example, in a sand unique system, the students may decide that it's sensible to sample on the ridges and in the dips in between the dunes, whereas across an urban park, they might want to sample at more systematic intervals. I think students should also be involved in uh, deciding which pieces of equipment they're going to use and how to use them so that the data is collected reliably. So for example, again in a sand unique system you may be using quadrats and anemometers and clinometers to measure slope angles. As I've already suggested, a variety of physical data could be collected at points along a transect like the one through the sand dune. Students should be encouraged to consider which variables may be relevant to the question that is the focus of their inquiry. For example, if their inquiry is involved in deposition on a beach or on a river beach, they might be interested in pebble size, shape or smoothness. If their inquiry is about microclimates or the sandy unique system, they might be interested in taking wind speed or direction measurements or vegetation type or height. If their transect goes up a slope and they're interested in the effect of altitude on temperature or the way in which water flows through and across the slope, they might take infiltration rate experiments at various points up the transect. So far we've focused on mainly physical geography uh, contexts, but of course you can use a transect in an urban inquiry as well. For example, you might decide to set a transect uh, across, a long transect across the city from the CBD out towards the suburbs, looking at variations in quality of life across different residential zones. You could set up a smaller transect across an urban ecosystem, such as a park uh, or churchyard, or a slightly longer transect across the CBD itself, looking at variations in retail and service provision uh, from the centre of the CPD, where the largest number of shoppers might be found, across to the edge of the CPD, where you might find more pound shops and second-hand shops. Or, to give a slightly more physical context to a, an urban transact, you might send, set up a transact through a town to look at uh, vulnerability within that town to flooding, whether it be coastal flooding or river flooding. The image on this slide, of course, suggests that you could set up a transact across the town to investigate the extent of a microclimate. Just like in the physical environment we discussed earlier, data collection can be at points along a transect. You could measure traffic counts, pedestrian flows, noise levels, land uses, 
or as shown in the shop below, uh, shop vacancies, for example. But in some urban studies, it may be more suitable to collect data in between points, in the sectors between the points. This allows students to have a, a wider overview of the urban area as they walk along their transects. So, for example, having walked for 100 or 200 metres, they might then stop and fill out a bipolar survey or a Likert scale survey, which uh, there's a screenshot below. This is the sort of survey where they have to decide if they strongly agree or disagree with a, with a statement. Or they might make a, a note of land uses and access to services in the last 100 or 200 metres that they've just walked through. Generally, transects are straight lines, but of course it's not always possible for them to be in a straight line, especially in an urban area where you've got to follow roads and paths. This screenshot shows areas of York vulnerable to flooding, and if you were to do a transect away from the river, you would almost certainly have to at times take a detour away from the straight line, following roads or paths, to get access to uh, various urban land uses. This is an example of opportunistic sampling. I have been asked if, if uh, teachers can survey along a river or along a beach rather than across a feature, and the answer is yes. Survey lines can be used longitudinally, i.e. following the length of a geographical feature. And typical examples would be to look at downstream changes along a river or along the length of a shoreline looking at the effect of longshore drift on pebble sizes. The principles of sampling along a line are very similar, whether it's a transect across a feature or down the length of a feature, and so either approach is acceptable. Which brings me to another question that I've been asked, which is, are cross-sections transects? And the answer is yes. It's an example of a, a small uh, transect, if you like, in the screenshot here, where students are collecting data across a river channel. Um, a beach profile would be another example, recording um, evidence of pebble size, for example, uh, from the low tide to the high tide mark. And again, students typically from that would draw a cross-section of that profile, and that would also qualify as a type of transect. We have other videos available on fieldwork, including one on uh, spheres of influence, which is the concept uh, which needs to be studied for the 2018 cycle. It would be good if you looked at those videos too, and if having seen those you still have any questions, please feel free to contact me on this email address. Thank you for watching this video.